Okay, in this example problem, we're going to go over discounts or the amortization on discounts and premiums on bonds. And so the problem states, oh, whoops, ABC Corp issued 500,000 shares, $500,000 of 7% debentures to yield 11%. That word always gets me. Receiving 424.624. Interest is payable semi annually and the bond matures in five years. So, number one, what entries would be made by ABC for the first two interest payments, assuming premium or discount amortization on interest dates by A, the straight line method, and B, the effective interest method? So, first, let's go over this. Well, we'll do A, the straight line method. So, first of all, here, here are those two entries um, right here on June 30th and December 31st. So the journal entry looks like this. Um, ABC would issue or would enter a debit to interest expense for the 25038 They would enter a credit to discount on bonds payable for 7538 And cash they would credit for 17500 because that's how much cash they paid out. Now we'll go to this other table to look at where they're getting these numbers. So I want you to look at this right here. The straight line method for a discount. So what you're doing is for ABC they sold this at a discount of 424, 624, but they're going to be paying back um, 500,000 over the course of this bond or over the life of this bond and so you set up this little table that looks like this first you need to know these the face value is 500,000 the stated rate 7 percent the market rates 11 percent and there's 10 periods so for book value all you do is you take this 500,000 and then you take what it sold for 424 624 424624 and you subtract that from this and you have 75376 and then the 75376 um, you divide by 10 which is the number of periods so you have 75737 if we round that to one decimal or sorry to zero decimals you've got seven five three eight you'll see that's the number here and so when you add this to the cash payment of seventeen thousand five hundred which is half of seven percent of five hundred thousand that's how you get what the cash payment is obviously um, when you add this seven five three eight to the seventeen five hundred you get twenty five thousand thirty eight that is your interest expense if we go back You'll see the 2538 of the interest expense. Then your discount amortization is this number again. And you add this number to the book value each time. So this number is just um, 424, 624 plus 7538. And then for a, uh, a straight line method, these numbers are all the same all the way down. If you just continued this, It'd just be 7538 for 10 straight um, payment periods. So that's how you get that. So these two entries, as you can see, are exactly the same. Now, effective interest method is different because your um, the the book value of the the bond and the interest expense is changing every time. So. You, you have the same interest. Interest expense is debited, discounts on bond payable and cash is credited. But if we go to this table again and we look at the effective interest method discount, um, this is fairly different. So you have the 424,624. You're starting with the same number in this book value. You'll see the table set up a little different. It really doesn't matter if you do it this way, but the big thing is to know what what numbers you're subtracting from what or what you're adding or whatever so interest expense right here now the way you get this number is um, you take so our market rate is eleven percent 
you take 424, 624, and you times that by 11. So I'll just show you in this table right here. Come on. You times that by 11. Sorry, 0 0.11. And then times. And then you times it by 0 0.5 because it's twice every year. So you'll see that this number, and if we round to no decimals, 23354-23354 is 23354 right here. Okay? And then this minus your cash payment is the 584, whoops, 5854. That's your discount amortization. And you add this to your book value. So 424, 624 plus 5854 is 430478. And that pattern just continues. So in this next one, you would take that same uh, that same number, or you take your book value, times it by 0.11 times 0.5 again. And then you'll get this discount amortization. Notice this is going up each time because your book value is going up because you're approaching the 500,000 as you go down. And so these numbers change the whole time. So the effective interest journey, uh, journal entries change. Your debits and credits are the same, obviously. 23354 and 23676. So now we go to number two. What entries would be made on the books of the investor for the first two interest receipts, assuming premium or discount amortization, uh, blah, 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 and he used the straight line method. So the investor's books are right here. Now he used the straight line method, so really all you do is you go to these straight line entries and it's just the reverse. Interest expenses up here, well, the investor is going to be crediting interest revenue for the exact same amounts. He's receiving 17500 in cash because that's what you paid out. That's what ABC paid out. His investments in the bonds is 7538, whereas the ABC's discount on bonds payable is 7538. And his interest revenue, like I said, is the 25038. It's exactly what their interest expense was. So that's fairly easy. It's just the reverse. And then we're going to see number three. If the sale is made to yield 5%, so it sold at a premium of 543760, what interest would be made by ABC for the first two interest payments using the straight line method and the effective interest method? So we have that done. Actually, let's show you the journal entries first. So at a premium, this is what you're this is what your journal entries are going to look like. You're going to have interest expense. Oh, whoops, I only did one effective interest entry. Um, these two are straight line. So you're going to have, on a premium, you're paying out the cash for $17,500. That's the same. You're debiting a premium on bonds payable for 4376 and the interest expense is 13124. So the way we get that the straight line premium you just take your 543760 you minus 500 and that leaves you with 43760. You divide 43760 by 10 payment periods which would give you the 4376. And in this case um you are you're going down so you received this much and you're you're moving down towards the 500,000 instead of instead of uh gaining towards the 500,000 if it had sold at a discount. So at a premium, you start with the premium number and you're going back down towards your face value. So what this has to be doing then is obviously um, this difference in the interest expense, you're subtracting this from the book value each time. And again, with the with the straight line method, it's this it's the same amount. Now with um, effective interest method, you're you've got the same debits and credits, but you need to move. It's just the opposite on this one. So you can see how that table works.